what's going on everyone and welcome back to the Amanda Bucci business channel where we talk all about business development, social media growth, and personal development because one of my biggest missions in life is helping you figure out how to exactly grow your online presence and share your talents and gifts with the world by showing you through this YouTube channel and my podcast and everywhere else. So I'm super excited to bring you guys this episode today teaching you my top 10 tips to grow on Instagram. Now this video might seem simple, but it's honestly the smallest things that you're going to hear in this video that might make the biggest difference for you. The first tip to grow on Instagram is to create captivating content, the three C's. Obviously, like I said, that seems pretty obvious, but creating captivating content is something that I think a lot of people just forget about. Captivating means keeping someone's attention, making it interesting, funny, entertaining, resourceful, informational, something along those lines. Because there are so many millions of users on Instagram that if you're finding a page and it's not captivating at all, it's not interesting, it's not funny, it's not entertaining, it's not useful, you're just gonna leave right away. There's so many different options to go and look at on Instagram, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, that if you want to stand out, it has to be captivating. So you have to care about your imagery, you have to care about your photography, you have to care about your videography. It doesn't have to be professional per se, but it has to be captivating. It can be just on your phone, it doesn't have to be on a fancy camera, but it has to, has to be some sort of captivating way. So whatever you do best at, whether it's you're a beautiful photographer, or whether you're just really funny and you can make really quick funny videos on your phone, or maybe you're really creative with video editing, and like Brian, and you can make amazing videos like he's made right here. These have done really well. I'm going to talk about them in a second. So number two is to get your shit on the explore page. So what I mean by that, it might seem like, how do I do that, Amanda? <laughs> the way to do that is a couple different ways. So if you think about the explore page like a business, you have to make sure that you understand what Instagram is doing. So Instagram is trying to create an amazing experience for each user. So I asked a couple of people from my audience to share their explore page, just people who are looking for online fitness coaches, because a lot of people might be here as an online fitness coach. These are what the explore pages of various people look like. So a couple of things that I noticed that are really similar. Number one, something that is trending. So I, these pictures are were on Christmas. Almost all of these explore pages have some sort of holiday post in them. So if you have a Santa hat, a Christmas tree, if there is a holiday or an event going on, current events, pop culture, any of those things, that can get you on the explore page. If there's a video, obviously you see on the explore page, there is at least one or two or three videos on everybody's explore page, especially in that big section. So posting a video that is engaging, that's really good, not necessarily high quality, but good lighting, something captivating, something engaging, it will pop up on there, higher chances. There's usually some form of selfies or pictures of humans. There's almost always humans. So if you're posting pictures of your phone or you know something that's not necessarily the most beautiful photography photo that has no human in it, it won't do as well. So make sure that you're number one, thinking about what's in your niche, recreating something that you know is already doing well because if there's photos on the explore page, that means that they're doing well because people are engaging with them, so creating similar content. Number three is to be original and think outside of the box. So I know that I said before getting on the explore page could mean recreating content that's already engageable, so you're kind of copying what people have done in a way. However, being creative is the best way to get on the explore page to get found. Think of people like Vine creators, like Lele Pons, Hannah Stocking, Inanna Sarkis, um, all of those people who are creating amazing, funny videos are all being really, really creative. And yes, they have teams behind them to create these videos. However, they're some of my favorite people to watch because there's always something new. It's always something interesting. You're not expecting the same exact thing out of them every single time. And if you can think outside the box and really spend some time here and tap into those creative juices, maybe create some space for yourself to think of ideas and just think of something, what can I do that someone's already kind of doing but it's a little bit different. That's really good. Something that's either next level, a little bit better, a little bit different. Something that like this, Brian's, like I said, Brian's been doing this thing, uh, my boyfriend Brian, that's a informational video, but he has a green screen behind him. He has a countdown timer. There's, there's an amazing thumbnail. It's just in a really captivating way that's different from what other people are doing. Somebody was the first person to make infographics. Somebody was the first person to make side-by-side -side X or check videos on fitness social media. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Fitness IQ. So number four is to be 
a part of the conversation. So yes, it's an amazing, amazing thing if people find you and start engaging with you. However, one of the best ways to get people to find you is to go to places that there's already a conversation. So comment on bigger pages, comment on other people's content, comment on other people's things so you can be a part of the conversation. Gary Vee says it's a dollar and 80 cent tactic. So go to 10 different hashtags, the top nine posts, comment on those posts, something that actually makes sense, something that's relevant, something that's helpful, something that's adding to the conversation, not just a stupid fucking emoji, something helpful, resourceful, informational, something that shows that you are there to chat and talk and discuss and be social. Um, being social on social media, what a, what a concept. So number six is to show your personality. So a lot of you guys follow me because you know exactly who I am. I show my personality, I swear, I stumble upon my words from time to time. Um, I wear my hair up in these funny buns. Sometimes I don't put makeup on. Sometimes I just like, I show myself. You guys know that I have anxiety. You guys know what's going on. You guys know who I am to an extent. So if you're not showing yourself and you're just a plain body speaking plain words with no personality and you're just giving information, no one's gonna care because you're just words and it's monotone and if there's no personality behind it, there's far less chance of someone connecting with you. So people connect to humans, to personalities, so make sure that shines through. Transfer, I always say, what do your friends think of you? What do your best friends think of you? If they were to use words to describe you, what would they be? How do you translate that onto social media? How do you be your highest self? that your best friends know you as and how do you translate that and put it out there on social media. Number seven is to collaborate with others. And I know this might not be as easy for some of you. Maybe you live in a really remote area, like somewhere in Iowa and you don't have anyone to collaborate with. One of the best ways I've seen people collaborate is really just to share people on, you know, if you have a friend that's also doing something in the same niche, but maybe they're slightly different, sharing on your Instagram stories why their thing is awesome. Um, my friend, Doc Jen Fit, she is a physical therapist and she has a seven day mobility challenge. I'll never do a mobility challenge. I'm not a physical therapist. And I was like, hey, that's awesome. And she asked me to share just to spread awareness. And I was like, hell yeah. Sounds great, I'll do that for sure. And that's a really easy way to collaborate with people. So even if you can't be in person, just share each other's stuff. If it makes sense for you guys, if you have similar size audiences, maybe one's a little bit bigger, but you can provide something else to them. And maybe you guys are just friends, it's cool. Create friends, create relationships. Collaborating with people is the best way to get exposure from different audiences. Oh, there's a cat that just showed up. Over here, hi cat, okay. Number eight is to do giveaways. So giveaways are an amazing way to give back to your audience and to create engagement on your post. So some of the best ways that I have done giveaways in the past is just to create conversation on the post. So one way to do it is to create conversation by saying, enter the giveaway by commenting below your favorite aspect of yourself. And that not just allows people to engage on your post, but it lets them know, hey, she cares about me and who I am, number one. Two, I love to talk about myself, so I'm excited to care, I'm excited to share, and it's not just a tag your friend type of thing. Tag your friend does work really well because you get to tag a friend and someone finds out who you are and then maybe they follow you, that's awesome. Another really great way is to do a cross promotion. So say, comment on my newest YouTube video. I know you're here on, on Instagram, but comment on my newest YouTube video to make sure that you know you enter the giveaway that way and I'll pick someone from there. You can do an email list opt-in. I always do that for giveaways so I can grow my email list, but someone can opt in by signing up for their email. You can use sumome.com for that. It's an amazing website that helps you create a little landing page for an opt-in for a giveaway, awesome. And just give back to your audience by creating more engagement, creating more trust, creating more of a way to give back to people. Tag friends, tag different brands, collaborate with different brands, say, hey, I would love to do a giveaway of your product on my page. We can do a collaboration where I just give away one thing of your product and um, you can grow awareness of your brand and I can grow um, a further relationship with my audience. Number nine is, did I do number nine twice? I did, one, two, three, okay. <laughs> Funny thing, this is a part of my personality that I'm showing you guys. I skipped number four and I have two number nines. So there's still 10, but they're a little out of order, but it's okay. So number nine, eight, 
is geotag and tag things. So make sure that you're geotagging your posts. They always do better um, than if you don't have any geotags on them. It just helps to create a bigger picture of what your image is rather than just an image. It's like, this is where it is. And then you can even geotag and click on that tag. And then that's an, another way to get exposure. Why would you skip out on that, right? And tagging brands and tagging people. So maybe you have a client or someone that you've been DMing or commenting back and forth. Maybe you guys follow each other and you think that she'd be a great fit for your program, for your business or maybe she just is gonna be your friend and you wanna tag her. Create a post, create a question on the post in the caption and then tag those people and say, hey, I would love if you specifically communicated on this post because I like you. Or you can tag different brands that you're wearing. Make sure that if you have different clothes on from different brands, you tag them. Really, really great way to get exposure and to collaborate is to get your content. Actually, that's gonna be number 10. I'll go there next, uh, which is technically number nine is to create content that will get reposted or shared by others. So if you check out different brands and you're a huge fan of a brand, make sure that you're creating content that they would potentially post on their page. If they do do shared posts where they're not just using their own photographers and creating their own content, create content that they might share because that happened to me so many different times and I think that's why my page grew so much is that I created content that different fitness pages would repost, different bodybuilding pages, um, all I, I've gotten my pictures reposted on a million different Instagram accounts and they've tagged me and they've created exposure for me without me even asking because that's the kind of content that they want to repost so they can grow their page as well. So if you create content that will work for a certain brand, create it, tag them, make sure they know that you've tagged them, use their hashtags, go do some research and figure out what hashtags they use and then put yourself in their um, in their vision and, and get their eyeballs on your page. The very last one, whatever the hell number it is, is to drive your followers to your business. So this isn't necessarily for Instagram growth in particular, but it's for the better good of your business. So if you're just on Instagram, no, you don't own those followers. Mark Zuckerberg owns those followers. So he can do whatever the heck he wants with the Instagram algorithm. You never know what's gonna happen. A lot of people have been affected by the algorithm and I will make a whole video on this topic in and of itself. However, you you don't own your followers, you don't own the way the platform works, you don't have control of it, you're just renting out the space essentially. So if the best way to get people that are following you to follow along on the rest of your journey and potentially stay with you and they never get to miss an email from you or they never get to miss content from you is to get them on your email list. So the number one best way to do that is to have a call to action at the end of your post and say, join my email list or to get this free guide or a free thing, any kind of freemium, a freebie, something that will help them and provide value to them, solve a problem for them completely for free that will get them onto your email list, which is something that I don't see. I only started my email list back in February of 2017 and I seriously wish I started it three years ago when I started my Instagram because having an email list means that you get to show up in the inbox of someone every day and people open their emails every single day and they don't necessarily always get to see your post. They might be affected by the algorithm. Maybe there's only a certain percentage of your followers that actually see your post, but when they get directly into someone's email, they're gonna see your email. They might not open it, they might not read it, but there's a much higher chance of them seeing it, reading it, and hearing from you if they're on your email list. So an email list subscriber is far more valuable as a potential customer or a potential audience member than an Instagram following. Like my email list is at 30,000 or so, or 35 right now. My Instagram is at 570,000. I would say my email list is more valuable. I'll just leave it at that. So those are my top 10 tips, however many numbers I said today for growing your Instagram following. I hope you guys found this helpful and valuable. Share it with a friend if you found it interesting and you think it would help someone else on Facebook. And as always, if you're the first three people to comment in the comment section, I will give you feedback on your Instagram. So uh, catch you in the next video. Turn the post notifications on, subscribe to the channel, like the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.